Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman, President of American Atheists with a special edition of the Atheist Viewpoint. Today we're going to show clips from our first presence at Net Roots Nation, which is a major progressive event on the West Coast. During this event, I had the opportunity to participate in three different podcasts. One for The Raw Story with Megan Carpentier, one with Nicole Sandler, and one for Flaming Sword of Justice Radio. These are pretty good interviews, and I hope you enjoy them. We'll be getting back to our regular programming, our regular format with our brand new set very soon. Until then, enjoy the clips. So why are you guys at Netroots this year? Well, uh, we're, first of all, we're thrilled to be at Netroots. Uh, and one of the things that we're seeing is the, the atheist uh, presence in America is really exploding. And as the as atheists explode, as the atheist movement grows, um, we've had better and bigger conventions and we've started uh, tabling at each other's conventions. But one of the things that we've noticed is that um, there's a lot of navel gazing. There's a lot of the, uh, the movement looking at itself and not going outside. So one of the things that I'm doing as president of American Atheists is reaching out to the non-atheist community where there are a lot of atheists. The progressive community uh, is chock full of atheists. Um, the National Organization for Women, People for the American Way, the ACLU, Americans United, uh, the, the Creating Change. These are movements, these are organizations um, chock full of atheists that need to know that we're here, that need to know that we're here to help them uh, and that need to know that uh, we're here to help them by fighting their fight with them. And one of the things that I really uh, am happy about is the incredibly warm welcome we have received at, at, at this convention. The, the response at Netroots Nation has been um, warm, it's been exciting, people are thrilled to see us here. So I think you're going to see American Atheists at these conventions probably more often than you're going to see us at Atheist conventions because I, I, I think um, this, is, this is really our place. Obviously in politics there's often a back and forth between a Democrat candidate and a Republican candidate, both of who has espoused only Christian views, but some sort of view of God. Mm -hmm. It's very rare to be elected an atheist to higher public office. Do you right. think that's changing as we grow as a nation? It, it's absolutely changing. Um, it, the, there was an old adage that you couldn't get elected to Congress at all. You couldn't get any elected office if you were an atheist. And then um, about, I think it was uh, 10 years ago, Pete Stark came out, Congressman Pete Stark came out as an atheist. And then after he came out as an atheist in Congress, he was reelected three times. So the idea that an atheist can't get elected to Congress has been proven incorrect. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to remind people of that. There are lots of atheists in Congress right now. They're just not outed. And what we need to do as a movement is not only elect outed atheists, but get the closeted atheists that are already in Congress to come out and say to their constituents, hey, I'm glad you like me. By the way, I'm an atheist. You know, and, and, and really destigmatize what we're doing and where we're going. I think what we're seeing on a national trend is a secularization. I think we're watching the Christian right die. I think we are. Because it is so easy, from my perspective, to make the Christian right look foolish, all I have to do is give them a microphone and let them talk about, you know, you can't get pregnant off of a rape. It, it, it's getting silly. And people are realizing that it's getting silly. People are realizing that, you know, saying you believe in an invisible man in the sky isn't necessarily a good thing. <laughs> what we really need are people who are going to look at the natural world that we live in and deal with the real problems that we face. And I think as long as we 
stick to that kind of mentality, I think we're going to see um, a shift. I think we're going to see a shift. I think we're going to see a shift in the next couple of election cycles where atheists are going to be elected. Not only, not only are atheists going to be elected, but outed atheists are going to be elected. And I think we're going to see atheists coming out as atheists in Congress. And I think once we get some outed atheists in Congress, again, getting reelected, I think we're going to lose. I, I think we're going to lose that that um, that stigma. I think we're going to see a growth of atheism. It's going to be an exponential growth, and driving that, of course, is going to be the young people. Approximately thirty percent of the under thirty crowd are non-religious. That's a big market. That's a big voting block. And as that 30% of the under 30 ages, and it becomes 30% of the under 40 market, assuming you no know, growth, um, and 30% of the under 50 market in another 20 years, um, I think we're going to see an inevitable shift from a you have to be religious to get to get elected to a why are we even talking about God when we're talking about politics? I'm sorry. Now, the, the point is that religion makes smart people believe dumb things. Okay? Things that are that, that are a thousand, two thousand, five thousand years long outdated. The whole concept of religion makes people believe the wrong thing. And I think that's a problem. I think that's a bad thing. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna mark out. I I think that there's a lot of beautiful things that, that, that come from religion. I think you, you probably agree with that as well. No. No, you don't think there's any beautiful stuff? That comes from religion? It comes no, from it comes from humans. It comes from, it comes from people. Okay. And religion takes the credit for it. And I don't think religion, I think that if you think that something that comes from religion doesn't come from religion, it comes from humans, then you can't also believe that religion takes the credit for it. Because of religion is people. Because you just, told, you just said religion yeah. takes the credit for it. You just actually made my okay. case. Right. Well, look, look, good the point I'm going to say religion. No. I think that religious, the, uh, people's religious faith, people of religious faith, yes. on the basis of their religious faith, yes. bring many beautiful things into the world. No doubt. And, uh, but I'd also say that there's also some, you know, some not so good things. Yeah. And what I want to get into right now is this sort of debate over public, you know, displays of religious conviction on public grounds uh, and whether there's a sort of quality or parity there in terms of things like monuments to the, to the Ten Commandments outside of courthouses. Okay. Uh, whether there's a reverse that could be possible. Well, because I think you have a story that you could bring to our I, listeners about something you're doing that uh, opens the door to a discussion about this. I, I do. And, and the important first thing to say is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with a person uh, displaying or doing something religious on public ground. Yeah. Uh, just as much as there's nothing wrong with an atheist doing something atheistic on public ground. Yeah. That's not the case. That's not the point. Yeah. But when it comes to the government, like I said, the separation of church and state is a synonym for freedom of religion. Yeah. And the farther we get from the separation of church and state, the less religious freedom we have. So we have to protect against that. And we have to bear in mind that as religion encroaches, it encroaches on little steps, and it never ever stops. Okay, little tiny steps. In God we trust, in the money. That's a little. Came thing. in the fifties. Came in the fifties. Yeah. One nation under God and the Pledge of Allegiance. Also in in the fifties. Not the end. Not big things. At least it doesn't seem big at the time. But there, then it's not very hard to ever walk it back. Yeah, right. It seems anti-religious to remove it, even if even if religious right. people at the time that it was proposed and non-religious people all agreed that it was crossing a boundary about whether it was to be involved in religion when it was first imposed. Right. Yeah. It's, it's still the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, right now, is a good example, there's a, um, a, a courthouse in Stark, Florida that has placed a Ten Commandments on their public law. Now, there's only one case where that's okay, and that is when there's a free speech zone. What is the free speech zone? A free speech zone means, means a, a courthouse um, dedicates a section of its public land to be to be open for public speech. Open for ah, it's like a graffiti wall. Exactly. It is anyone can like, go and it is yeah. kind of like a graffiti wall. Yeah. So um, a religious organization, a men's, the Men's Christian Fellowship, 
uh, put the Ten Commandments on their public land. Yeah. They paid for it, so it's privately funded but on public land. Okay. And we said, you know, this is this is illegal. You can't put the Ten Commandments on public ground because that's clearly an, an endorsement of one religion over another. Yeah. It's clearly an endorsement of religion over non-religion. It's clearly illegal. Unless it's a free speech zone. If it's a free speech zone, you can put that there. But you have to allow everybody else to put that there too. Yeah. So we went to Stark and we had some complaints about this Ten Commandments thing going up. And they said, well, it's a free speech zone. So we said, we're putting the monument up too. We decided to challenge it. Uh -huh. And so we are When you say we, did you go? Yeah. Well, well it was, was someone it was on your American team? Atheist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was American And was the person on your team? They go, where do they go? They go into the courthouse and, and say this? They have to make a legal complaint? Yeah, well, we had, we had to, we had to sue. Yeah, we had to, to file a lawsuit. We had to file a lawsuit. Okay. Because the first thing that they'll say is, yeah. no, you can't do it. Yeah. Uh, so and we did had they, to file and a lawsuit. lawsuit. Did they try to throw it out? Are they like, what do they do? What's the response? We, we went to mediation, but because this is so clear, yeah. because there are other cases that have already been decided all the way up at the Supreme Court level, the, the, it, it's a very, very clear case. They were going to lose. Huh. And right? they knew it. They knew it. That's why they settled. Huh. huh. And that's why they let us put our own monument up there. Did, it, so, did, you, uh, did you hear about like what their expression was in, in the mediation session when they realized they were going to have to allow American atheists to put up a monument outside of the ground? No, no. Actually, uh, what I heard was you know, the, the start. I, I, I kind of felt bad for Stark. Yeah. Uh, Stark because the Christian Fellowship threatened to sue if they took the Ten Commandments down. So Stark was really in a bad place. They were going to get sued one way or another. Yeah. And so what they did is the only thing that they could do, the right thing. And I would like to just shout out to them because they were, they have always been courteous. Okay. Uh, they've always been nice. They've always been professional. The Thank you to the people of Stark. Yeah, the people of Stark and the, and the elected officials of Stark um, have never been anti-atheist. Yeah. They've never been overtly you know, good. Uh, hostile. Yeah. So we are putting up our the first ever atheist monument on public land. What is it? What is what is an atheist monument going to say? Well, and that's a good question. And yeah. we had a good discussion about that. Exactly. What are we going to do? Yeah. Okay. You know. So what is an atheist monument? Well, uh, atheists are all about function. Uh, right. We are all about the physical, the yeah. real. Yeah. So we wanted it to have some function, not just a, not just a thing, yeah. not just a sign, but a function. So we have a bench that we make. Okay. The monument is a bench. But you can sit on. You can sit on. Yeah. You can try to sit on a regular uh, monument, but it's uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. It's all yeah. The letters, the raised letters on your butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the imprint of a human face or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just not fun. And, and the Ten Commandments is on a slant, so yeah. you know, yeah. you yeah. it's sliding yeah. up. Yeah. But so we've got a bench, yeah. and on the bench we have several inscriptions. Uh, the first inscription is by Madeline Murray O'Hare, my predecessor, the founder of American Atheism, uh, the most hated woman in America. When did she found American Atheism? 1963, 50 years ago. Okay. And we put a very, very hateful quote from her, the most hated quote, the most hated woman in America. Yeah. We put a very hateful quote on there. It says that an atheist puts a hospital up instead of a church and that we seek to banish uh, war, poverty, and ignorance. Real hateful stuff. Uh, and then man, it's more poverty or ignorance. God, well, how could you be more hateful? I, I know, it's just, it, the, the hate just exuded. Yeah. What, what politicians do is they, they hide behind their religion when they have nothing to say, okay? They, they don't have a, a financial plan. A good example is Rick Perry, okay? Um, his state is having some serious problems. Um, the financial difficulties in, in the state of Texas, the educational difficulties, they're bad. He has no solution. So he hides behind God and they pray for rain. Okay? And they pray for God to help their state. And that's all he can do. And I think that what needs to happen is that that needs to be exposed as a complete cop-out. As the complete cop-out that it is. Now, to your question about morality. What needs to be said about morality is that people make their own moral decisions. Everybody makes their own moral decisions. Then a theistic person would go to a church and find a place where the person, where the church agrees with him or her and actually say, okay, well now my morality comes from my church. Now my morality is perfect. Now my morality is flawless, unchangeable. 
and unquestionable. An atheist will say, I have this opinion, but of course it can be changed. A theist will change their opinion too. Then they change churches, and when they change churches, they again reinforce their opinion of morality with the dogma of the church that they have chosen because it matches their opinion. So, when we're talking about politicians using religion as a morality, what we have to understand is that it's not the, the that religion is not the source of morality. Humanity is the source of our own morality. And when they use religion to justify it, what they're really doing is hiding behind their religion so that they don't have to justify their positions. And I think that's what has to be exposed. When somebody says, I believe X because that's what my God tells me. That's a lousy answer. And we have to expose them. So I notice on your lanyard you're wearing the, the Trust Women um, thing from Narrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I know obviously there's been a lot of controversies uh, within atheism over the last few months about the confluence of atheism and feminism and sexism in the atheist community. Yes. And obviously there was a very big blow up after the femi Feminism and Secularism Conference yes. because of some remarks made by a male atheist that yes. reinforced sort of sexist trips. How do you think, especially looking at feminism which is itself struggling between atheism and finding churches that are sort of pro-feminism, how can atheists address this problem in the community and address the kind of language that's been used to marginalize women? That's a, that's a difficult question and it's a big question. Um, the reason I'm wearing this narrow pin is because I'm a feminist. I'm a proud feminist and I've always been a feminist. Um, now, American Atheist is not a feminist organization, but I believe pretty firmly that feminism is the inevitable result of atheism, that sexism is rooted in religion. And that's not, a, that's, not a, um, that's not a perfect thing. There are other, pro other roots of it, the paternalistic societies. Uh, but really when we're talking about how uh, we're dealing with this, it, it's hard because atheism is all about free speech. Atheism is all about open communication. And some atheists are simply not nice people. And, and just like some Christians are not nice people and some Jews are not nice people, some atheists are simply not nice people. And there's a lot of people who are in that middle area. Uh, and there's a lot of misunderstanding. So what I think has to happen is that the feminist voice uh, has to be, uh, the, the feminist voice in atheism has to be protected protected maybe not the right word but I'll use it anyways the voice of feminism has to be protected that has to be amplified it has to be helped um, by the men in atheism and by the women as well uh, we have to make a stand that says you know it's just obvious that men and women are equal and have and it's also obvious that uh, rape jokes sent to feminist speakers and sent to feminist bloggers that's not what good people do and it, at, the, at the crux of that I've said many times that the atheist movement is the good guys we are the good guys we strive for equality not advantage that's what makes us the good guys good guys don't act like that they don't act like that to our enemies, and they don't act like that to our allies. Um, I have seen people within the atheist movement treat other atheists more poorly than I would treat the worst of our adversaries. And that shames me. That, that makes me ashamed of them. Uh, um, I think the Women in Secularism Conference was a huge success my personal opinion. I was there um, and I thought it was great and it was also packed full and packed full larger than the second than the first one. It was the second conference um, and I think I hope there's going to be a WISP 3. I hope there will be a third one um, and I think that 
even if there isn't, I think the feminist voice in atheism is going to continue to expand as it should. I think it's going to diversify more, uh, and we are seeing that diversification within the feminist movement, within the atheism movement. And what I hope and what I think will happen is that the atheist movement on the whole will see the anti-feminists for what they are and drop them. And I think that's going to happen. A good analogy. Years ago, before I became president, before I was vice president, I was just before I was anything, you know, any paid position, I was just a volunteer. I shouldn't say just a volunteer. I was a volunteer and I ran the blog for the No God blog. And people started writing nasty stuff about me on the blog in the comments. And at first I would delete them. You know, I didn't like them. But what I found out was if I left them there, the rest of the community would come in and pig pile on the people who were posting the nasty stuff. And then the people who were posting the nasty stuff would go away. And that's what I'm hoping will happen on the broader atheist movement. I think feminism um, isn't going away. And I think the men's rights advocates are going away. And correct my history, but I mean, one of the founders of American Atheists was a woman. Yeah, the founder. Right. Well, the founder of American Atheists was Madeline Murray O'Hare, right. my predecessor. Her successor, her immediate successor, was Ellen Johnson. She was president for 12 years. Um, and you know, I am very fortunate to have on my team um, a managing director, uh, Amanda Keneef, my vice president, and very good friend, Kathy Johnson, and some fantastic uh, diversity in the board of American Atheists that I'm very, very proud of and that I'm personally nourishing uh, so that we can keep our perspectives fresh and diverse. Um, I think that women have been and will continue to be invaluable, and I mean literally invaluable, to the atheist movement. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's clip show. We really had a great time at Netroots Nation, and we really enjoyed meeting all the great people there. Next week, our show will be on the first ever Atheist Monument in Stark, Florida. So. Be sure to catch that show. Until then, thank you for watching Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. Knock, knock, get the sound from my door. You with the message from the Lord. Jesus loves you, yes I'm sure, but I'm not born anymore. You're trying to save my soul with your washed out. If I'm happy, 
Yes, I am. I think for myself. I've learned to stand. Kneel if you want. I don't give a damn. But I'm not praying anymore. Can't you get free from the jail inside? You sold your own mind for a place to hide. Break your slave chains and cast them aside. Freedom's knocking at your door. I wish I could free you from yourself. Your disdain life and you're scared of hell. They've indoctrinated you quite well, but we're not falling anymore.